Hi, my name is Ben. You're watching this video clip because you have blood clots. This is the first of a series of little clips that I'm going to show you some fast tracking techniques to speed up your recovery. Now this clip is not going to pertain to everybody. Fast tracking is going to be more for people that are ambitious, that feel like they've got to get, you know, cured quicker. Everybody has different situations. Some people maybe through no fault of their own, they got a blood clot, their job, their career depends on them being at work. What can we do to help them? Or maybe if you're like I am, you just can't bear the change of life associated with recovery may last up to two years. That's not in my rule book. I can't tolerate that. Some people can and that's fine. Take what you need, learn what you can, but above all, just use your own common sense. First thing I want to tell you though is I am not a doctor. No doctor here. I am not going to try to give you medical advice. I just want you to use your own common sense. Now the fast track concept is one in which your doctors are not going to approve of. The reason? Simple. It's liability. Anything that is beyond their standard protocol, they cannot tell you, yeah, that's okay. They'd be liable. Even though they may not have any problem with some of these things, they can't tell you that. In fact, they're going to give you the old stick eye and say, I wouldn't recommend that. Let's get real. Let's go for what makes common sense, and that's the principle of fast tracking. Let's be creative. Let's use what makes common sense. And above all, let's apply it and do it with a positive mental attitude. That's what fast tracking is all about. Now, if you're the sedentary kind of person and you're going to be content to walk gingerly around for two years, that's fine. You know, you, you can do that. But for people like myself and maybe other sports people, you just can't really, you know, live with the idea of just being a cripple for two years. So I'm going to help you. Okay, let's just get going. First thing I want to mention for you is you need to be on anticoagulants whether it's Warfarin or Coumadin or Lovenox or whatever, your doctor should have you on some sort of anticoagulant. Very important. Next thing, as soon as you can, you should have uh, an inferior vena cava filter installed. It's an outpatient procedure, only takes about uh, 30 minutes, something like that. But it will give you the insurance of knowing that worst case scenario, you're going to be protected. It's like having an insurance policy. That filter is going to stop any blood clots from uh, going to your heart and onto the lungs. Now, that's a very uh, small chance, but it'd be good to have a filter. In fact, I believe anybody over the age of 50 just ought to have one installed, just out of general principle, really. It makes sense. Okay, next up. What is the concept for compression therapy? We're going to talk about, in this video clip, about using compression techniques. The standard concept is if we enclose a structure such as our leg, for example, with a compression stocking, that that stocking is going to put pressure on all the structures within there. It's going to raise the uh, arterial venous pressure so that the uh, venous return can get on up through the body. Otherwise, it's going to kind of want to hang down there and pull and, uh, and permeate the tissues. And of course, that means fluid leakage and so forth. Don't want that. Okay, so it's pretty simple. We need to do some sort of compression therapy. Now, your doctor is going to have his own guidelines. In fact, I have never heard of a doctor telling a patient, uh, let's start with something that we don't ordinarily use. No, they're going to say, we want you, when you get out of the hospital, of course, they're going to say, we want you to go with uh, 30 to 40 millimeter compression stockings and Wear that for a couple of years, you'll be fine. Whoa, wait a minute. Rule of thumb, whatever your doctor says, be thinking in terms of going to the next higher level of compression because he's used to training in one mode. He doesn't have any idea whether we should go to a higher level and if so, what shorter tests, what sort of test should he run to be able to tell you to do that? No, that's out of his league. You make that decision. And we're going to talk a little bit more on that in just a moment. But first, let me tell you that we have some assortment of uh, stockings here. Some good, some bad. 
Now, I have only tried a very few. I've tried Medivin brand. I have tried the uh, Sigvaris brand. And I have tried the Venosan brand. Okay, this is a Venosan. This is a calf eye stocking. And obviously, calf eye stockings be used for blood clot in the calf, but not always. In fact, uh, I use them mix and match with my full length thigh stockings. These stockings here go all the way up to the thigh. Okay, these things <clears throat> come in handy if you feel like you need a little bit more compression in this area than what you're getting with your thigh high stocking, put one of these on. Regardless of what you choose, compression stockings can be a real bear to put on. I mean, the first time you get a compression stocking, you're going to say, whoa, Jack, they gave me the wrong size here because there's no way I can pull this on my leg. Well, you're right. And a lot of these people that work at the supply stores, they'll tell you anything. They'll say, oh, we'll use our little silk handkerchief to put in there and it'll come right. No, none of that works. Here's what you need. You need one of these uh, frameworks that helps you put the stocking on. You put the stocking over the frame. I would demonstrate this is a calf eye. Put your foot in there, and then just push your foot through, and you now have your stocking on. Without the frame, you're looking at maybe 20 minutes to get that on. Okay, let's say you want to increase the uh, compression maybe in the calf. Maybe you've only got a, a clot in the calf. Let's take something like this, one of these calf supports, or knee supports rather, and we can pull it up here. We can get knee support, we can put it there, we can get extra calf support. See, so we're learning to be creative. You may have one leg that's no problem, the other leg has additional problems. So think about what materials you have at hand to work with. Now, if you use this uh, situation, that's fine. But I would highly recommend that you put the stocking on top of this support. That way it won't cut into you. Take another situation, let's say you're thinking about going to the gym, you want to work out, but you don't want to wear these long black stockings, it looks kind of funny. Okay, here's what you do, you put your sock on, and you take top of these, and you just kind of fold them down to about midline. It's going to look kind of neat, trim, kind of accentuate your outfit. Nobody's going to notice. You're going to feel comfortable. When you get home, you put your full-length thigh highs or whatever armor you've got back on. Okay, let's talk about uh, types of stockings. We have the uh, uh, Venusan stockings. I've had these for probably 8 or 10 years. I use them off and on. They seem to be a very good stocking, but they don't come in compressions above uh, 20 to 30, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, next we have, this is called a pantyhose stocking. Now the guy that sold these from the medical supply store said they were thigh highs. Well, they are thigh highs, but they're pantyhose, and these are not what you want. If you have a blood clot in your femoral veins, your legs are going to be swollen, your egg basket is going to be swollen, and these things are a bear to get down if you're trying to go to the toilet and, and pee or something like that. You know, these things just, you got to put them down around your ankles, and then you got to get them back up. Forget these. Okay, these guys. Okay, this is military issue almost. I'm just joking. But I was so impressed. I've only had these for a couple weeks. They're made by Sigveris. They're probably going to run you about $135, $140 through a mail order. These are ultra-high compressions, 40 to 50 millimeter mercury pressure. I like these because when I was wearing these little ladies here, they just kind of expanded a little bit in about four weeks and they were no longer giving me compression and were just not doing the job that I needed. I wanted something ram tough. <laughs> so anyway, I, I got these. Notice they have uh, silicon at the top to uh, help adhere to your body, and this stuff is like armor mesh. I mean, it, it reminds me of the Knights of Armor, you know, when they wore the chain mail and everything. This is really tough stuff. You will need one of these. You will have to have one. And when you get your first pair, 
you're going to think, oh no, I can, there's no way to get this on. Yeah, you can. Just struggle with it. Go to the website and get the right dimensions, where to take measurements and everything. When you get one of these stockings, you're going to need to measure your ankle uh, right, right above the heel, the widest place in your calf, and the widest place on your thigh, and, and then your inseam. You will probably need, and I would highly recommend, getting two sets of these in different compressions. The first set is while you're recovering in the hospital or thereafter for a little while, your leg's still swollen, you would want to get the 30 to 40 millimeter compression. When your swelling goes down and you're getting more mobile, then you want to go back up as high as you can. I went to the 40 to 50. I believe they even make a 50 to 60. I, I don't even want to think in terms of that. I mean, these are just incredible. These others may be too. I just haven't experienced uh, uh, the incredibleness in them yet. Okay, so the reason I'm saying get two pairs is because after you graduate to this heavier compression, then you may later, uh, maybe six months from now, want to go back to a lighter compression just, just uh, for good measure. A lot, of, uh, a lot of people suggest wearing compression stock, stockings for up to two years after you've had your clot. You know, I don't know about that, but if that's the case, it'd be a lot easier to put on a, a lighter compression than these. These bad boys are great for getting you through the hard times. We're going to talk more about that in our next clip. Okay, I think I've just about covered everything. The main thing is adapt to your needs, whatever combinations you need. For example, if you can afford, if you cannot afford compression stockings, get some of this cloth vet wrap, probably runs you six, seven dollars a roll at the most, and just start wrapping the heck out of your leg. Let's assume you've got a clot in the leg, not in your arm. Okay, and just wrap it all the way down. You don't have to overlap each seam. Just sort of like that, and it's got a piece of Velcro at the bottom and that Velcro is going to allow you to fasten this and that bad boy is just going to stay there forever and ever. Uh, except I've got the Velcro on the wrong side. Okay, another uh, quick idea. Let's say you're, that you've just been diagnosed and you haven't had time to get your compression stockings in. Go to a restaurant supply place, get a roll of saran wrap. Saran wrap will work great. Wrap that around your legs, change it every day. Little tip here, take some uh, hand lotion, just kind of very lightly put over your leg, and that will really help uh, seal that. It will get you by. In other words, if you're the only one in the family <laughs> that's got a job, and, you have to make an income and you somehow got to survive sitting at your desk. It's going to be hard with a blood clot. These little tricks can get you by and save your life. The other thing I want to mention before you just outright order one of these, you can order them on the internet without a prescription. You really need to calculate what's called the ABI index. That's the ankle, brachial, artery, vein uh, pressures. Actually, they're arterial pressures we're talking about. And what you do, go to your doctor, Having put his uh, cuff on your ankle, get the systolic pressure. Take the highest pressure in both ankles. Then do the bronchial artery. Take the highest pressure from both arms. Now, divide the ankle pressure, the highest ankle pressure, by the highest bronchial pressure. And if that number, which is your index, is between 0.9 and 1.3, then you're good to go for ordering these. If it's on the low side or the high side, it could mean that you have uh, uh, other arterial conditions that need to be looked into. So use your judgment on that. Uh, I think this concludes everything. I look forward to seeing you on the next video, Fast Tracking Clip. Use what you can. This doesn't apply to everybody, so forgive me if I have uh, steered you wrong, but this is something that I think if you're really motivated, you're going to want to pursue. Wait till you see the next clip. Thank you.